Safran Hindustan Aeronautics Limited have entered a joint venture to co-design and co-produce the next generation of helicopter engines in India. And we are extremely privileged to have Cedric Uber, who is the CEO of Safran Helicopters with us. Mr. Uber, thank you so much for giving us time and welcome to India. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me today. I'm very pleased uh, to do this interview with you uh, today in Delhi. The joint venture, Mr. Gouveia, when we talk about it, it's it's mainly talking about the MT, uh, the multi-role helicopters and the deck-based multi-role helicopters. That's, I believe, it's going to be a 13-ton helicopter. But can you tell us more about the joint venture? Uh, so this is a, a key project today in uh, the growing of the partnership, the historical partnership we have with uh, HEL. Uh, for now more than uh, 50 years, so this is uh, something. And uh, we have decided together and beyond our two countries together to bring this partnership to a new height, to a new uh, level. And we are very honored, we are very proud uh, to have the shareholder agreement signed for the occasion of the visit of Prime Minister Modi in Paris uh, on the 14th of uh, of July. Uh, so the, the purpose of the joint venture, as you rightly uh, said, it, uh, is to uh, design, manufacture, sell and support a new generation engine, a high power turboshaft uh, engine dedicated to a multi-role helicopter, a heavy helicopter weighing uh, between 13 and uh, 14, uh, 14 tons with uh, its right also a deck base or a Navy version. Uh, there have been reports suggesting that uh, investment could be upwards of 10,000 crore rupees. Now, I'm not good at math, so I can't translate that. It's probably around $1.3 billion. But there is a process, there's a procedure that follows. Could you explain to us uh, the investment that is planned? Okay. So, the, of course, for developing such a new generation engine, uh, the amount of investment will be significant on both sides uh, and it will uh, be uh, uh, consistent with the respective workshop of each uh, of each partner and of course this is something also we'll have to discuss uh, with uh, uh, customer as airplane maker the air framer so HL as the air framer so it's a bit too soon to tell and to share with you very specific very precise amounts and number but it will be a uh, something uh, significant again for both parties, but uh, I'm sure a very good investment for the future of uh, both, uh, both companies and uh, 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 both uh, industrials we are. Mr. Gouveia, you mentioned work share. Yeah. How is that going to be allocated between India and France? So it's, uh, and it's important to be said, it's a joint venture, yeah. so it's a 50-50 work share. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, agreed uh, on this work share. It was back in February uh, during the Aero India and the, the air show uh, in, uh, in India. So we know very well now what we'll have to do on each side and together, because at the end we are talking about one engine. Okay. Uh, and uh, so the, the work share is, uh, is clearly defined today, you know, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, for the first time, I think, uh, we will uh, invite uh, HL uh, to uh, take part uh, in the in the design of uh, some uh, components of the hot parts, you know, the core of the engine. Yeah. In terms of the joint venture, Mr. Goubert, has it been decided where that will be based and what about uh, the assembly of the engines itself? So it's, I think we can consider it's decided. And so we have decided with uh, HL, you know, to uh, locate this John Ven venture and its activities uh, in Bangalore, you know, probably close to the uh, helicopter assembly line of HL. Which again is uh, to be decided where the assembly line will be? No, I think it's, uh, it's decided. So uh, I don't have in mind the precise location, but it will be uh, somewhere in Bangalore or in the outskirts of Bangalore. You talked about significant investment. Another significant aspect in terms of uh, numbers both in quantity and quality, would probably be employment. Yeah. So how much would that be benefiting India and, and France 
Mm -hmm. And what about the MRO activities? Will they be taking place completely in India, or is that also shared? Mm -hmm. No, you, you, it's a, it's a, it's a good point. Behind this project, you know what is at stake? It's a lot of jobs, huh? and most of those jobs will be located in India. And we are talking about high quality jobs, huh? uh, engineering, manufacturing, sales support, you know, administration. Uh, so a lot of jobs related, of course, and at stake with this uh, project, which is a good thing, both for India and, uh, and for France. Uh, in terms of uh, MRO activities, it has been also decided to locate uh, MRO uh, facility and capacities dedicated to this engine uh, in the future in India as, uh, as well. And uh, just to also uh, 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 emphasize that um, in terms of MRO activities, we, it will be conducted in parallel with another project we have, uh, and it's a decision that was made, you know, in the past, you know, to uh, uh, set up a, a joint venture dedicated to MRO activities for the two, um, two turboshaft uh, engines, the TM333 uh, uh, three, 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 and the Shakti engines. And uh, this, as I speak, you know, the building is being constructed uh, in Goa, and. Uh, it's going, I hope, to uh, enter service somewhere by the end of 24, uh, beginning of, uh, of 25. So a lot is, uh, is coming in terms of MRO with a more short-term horizon for TM333 and Shakti. And in the future, you know, and we have to decide where we will locate this MRO uh, uh, facility with HL. It's not decided yet for the engine of the IMRH helicopter. Uh, two prongs of Indian policy are what we call Atmanir Bharta, which is self-reliance. And uh, we're also looking at defense exports now in a large way, yes. which many uh, big developed countries have already reached that stage. In terms of exports, what mm -hmm. are your projections for these helicopter engines and helicopters? So definitely, you know, our common purpose with HL is also to develop and build an engine meant to be exported. Uh, we are really talking about uh, a brand new turbo machine, uh -huh. uh, around 3,000 shaft horsepower, and it will be a best state of the art engine. Okay, so we have no doubt together with HL that this engine will be very suited for project in India, but also to equip helicopters and also IMRH, also uh, uh, said to be exported outside. Of, uh, of India yeah. and, uh, and keep in mind, you know, because uh, uh, we are talking about the Indian ambition uh, uh, regarding self-reliance, uh, that uh, through this joint venture with HL, we are basically setting up, you know, the first Indian engine manufacturer because uh, 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 certainly the center of gravity of all the activities of the joint venture will be located in India. So again, just taking up from the last point, you mentioned a 300 uh, horsepower shaft. 3,000. 3,000. Right. So this is a completely new engine. It's not a variant. No, it's a, it's a really a new engine. Of course, we will harness, you know, some technologies and know-how that Safran helicopter engines recently demonstrated on high, uh, high power uh, 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 turbo uh, turbo engine for, for helicopters, but uh, it will be something brand new. There's a lot of interest in India, Mr. Gobe, about uh, technology transfer. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain to us w what you can on that and mm -hmm. why would, say, so far in this case, give up intellectual property mm -hmm. rights? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if for this project, you know, the joint venture, it's still relevant, you know, to talk about transfer of technology, because basically we are talking about uh, a co-development of a brand new engine, mainly located in India. Uh, so when we talk about transfer technology, we are talking about technology we have developed in France and then we transfer to India. What we will do together with HL, you know, as partner, is to develop here in India to co-develop this new engine. Okay, so I will say by design, per se, the joint venture is uh, pushing the envelope in terms of technology collaboration really a step further. I think this is really a pivotal moment for the partnership uh, 
in this area between France and India and between HL and Safran helicopter engines. I think that's a very important point that you're bringing up there again. But in terms of transfer of technology, if there's any, or IPR rights, wanted to understand how it works in France. Is the government also involved in that? And for example, if you look at the US, they are law. Yes, yes, Congress. yes. How does that work? In France? Yes. Uh, so, uh, of course, uh, as you know, and it has been demonstrated again during the visit of uh, Prime Minister Modi in France, the French authorities, and especially the French Minister of Defense, is supporting, you know, this project. And so, of course, we had to ask for authorizations, you know, to uh, be able to work on such uh, a sensitive uh, technology or such uh, a strategic product like a big engine for heavy military helicopter. We had to ask authorization clearance to the French DOD, which we got, of course. Eh? And then, you know, you have IPs on the engine side. We have IPs on the French side, and we will keep uh, our IPs. But wh all what we do together, we will develop IPs, you know, belonging, what we call foreground IPs, you know, to each partner and to the joint venture. And in terms of a time frame, are we looking at the end of the decade, like uh, 2030 for the engine development? Yes. So uh, for us, yes, the goal is to be ready to enter service by the end of the, of the decade, you know, on the IMRH. But then this is also the air framer, you know, to tell. Uh, and of course, we will do things according, you know, to the schedule, to the development schedule of the helicopter. But the, the goal for us is to be ready, you know, to support a potential entry into service by 2030. You mentioned the, the Shakti engine. Yeah. Here. Where does the Shakti engine and the helicopter uh, engine MRO stand in terms of joint ventures and this project? Yes. So, uh, again, as I as I said, uh, we have the project now, but it's uh, another project, you know, to uh, uh, create and the decision has been made. And as I speak, you know, the facility is being built in Doha. This will be a joint venture with HL dedicated to the MAO of the TM-333, but also uh, uh, the MAO of the Shakti engines. And as you probably know, uh, we have uh, agreements, or uh, we are discussing uh, further agreements with HL and also with the Indian authorities, you know, to do more of the Shakti engines. We do already a lot of the Shakti engine in India, but uh, to, do, uh, to go a step further and to do even more in the months and years to come. Some would consider this a, a slightly sensitive question in India. And how do you see the Indian defense ecosystem, especially in what? the projects you are working with and the HAL has been working yeah. for decades. Mm -hmm. Do you see your co-partner as, do you assess them as capable enough to deliver mm -hmm. such high okay. technology? Okay. So, uh, as you said it, uh, we have worked now for more than five decades, uh, for more than 50 years with HAL and with the Indian industry. Uh, so, we have seen the evolution, all the progress. Uh, and we have no doubts, we are very confident that HL and the Defense Ecosystem India has now the right maturity level, you know, to engage such uh, um, sophisticated project uh, in a successful manner, in a very mature manner, I, I will say, and I say that in a very humble manner, you know. Uh, we recognize all the, all the progress uh, and now we can uh, uh, consider that uh, India and HL are fully capable, really, of uh, accomplishing a uh, very advanced uh, a project like the one, you know, we'll contribute to uh, in, uh, through this uh, joint venture with HL. So were the two luminaries in helicopter technology, I mean, Igor Sikorsky and Joseph Sidlowski, yeah. and uh, how much he has to do with Safran's whole, you know, ethos, what would you, what would Joseph be thinking about the kind of expansion that Safran has achieved? I know it's not just India, it's, it's all over the world. Yes. But no. his philosophy. Yes. We owe, legacy. yes, of course, we owe a lot to Joseph Sidlowski. He was a visionary entrepreneur. Uh, and uh, can you uh, imagine that uh, over the past decades, you know, before 
what was n at that stage not um, r uh, a Safran helicopter engines, but Turbo Mecha, yeah. you know, he already um, from nothing, you know, he uh, built, he managed to build, it's very impressive, in France, you know, the world leader, for one of the world leader for uh, the engine of the, for helicopter market, both military and, uh, and civil. So uh, we have to recognize that, you know, and in terms of philosophy, you know, and to be uh, consistent with the values of, uh, of, um, of uh, Joseph Sidlowski, I think we need to, to be visionary. And I think the partnership with India and started with him, by the way, was a visionary one. Of course, it takes time. It's always takes time. But now it's paying more and more dividends for both countries. And uh, he, at that time, you know, he, well, uh, he was already uh, ahead, you know, of the evolution of the world, you know, starting to uh, plant seeds, True. Uh, in, uh, and especially in, uh, in India. And uh, if we are here, you know, together to discuss about Safran helicopter engines, the partnership with HL, the partnership for helicopter markets uh, uh, between the two countries, you know, without Joseph Sidlowski, it would have never happened. And so, I think the the first uh, value is to is to dare, you know, to be bold enough and ambitious enough together, you know, to accomplish great things for our industry and for both countries and for the partnership, the collaboration between uh, uh, India and uh, and France. So this is uh, this is something, you know, we are very proud and delighted to be part of. This is it, Gouria. Again, thank you so much for your time and uh, sharing all your expertise. May those seeds that you were talking about grow into yes. huge trees. Huge trees, absolutely. Thank you again. Oh, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. My pleasure. Too. And for all our viewers, do send us uh, feedback for this uh, interview with uh, Cedric Gouria, the CEO of Safra Helicopters. And uh, feedback to all other videos. You can follow our social media handles to get the latest articles and interviews that we put up. I'm Amit Aburi.